Johnny Marr is not a road tester. Johnny Marr played guitar in the Smiths and continues to pursue a successful solo career. But when Cars Group test of the new BMW X3, Audi Q5 and Mercedes GLC gate crashes his latest video shoot in Manchester, Marr finds time to assist. We've already decided that the BMW X3 has the best, most intuitive infotainment of the three midsize SUVs, but we're curious how easy it is to fathom for your average member of the public, or guitar god. After tuning to Radio Manchester, we ask Mar if he can find BBC Six Music under strictly timed conditions. He jumps to the task like he's deciding between snipping the blue or the red wire with seconds to spare. There are a couple of expletives and missteps as he presses I drive shortcut buttons and spins its rotary dial, but after 31.54 seconds, Morrissey's former writing partner hits six music. There's no doubt Mars time would tumble given a little practice, he's already got the neck. The Mercedes Command and Audi MMI infotainment systems are both very good, but you take your eyes off the road more than in the BMW, the Audi switches that border its rotary dial typically need a glance and the touchpad that hovers over the Merck's command system dial is like another hand spurning your advances. And neither can match the BMW graphics visual punch. Some might question the relevance of an inner city location and celebrity infotainment test in a mid-size luxury SUV review, but Audi devotes almost 4,000 words to technology in the Q5's press kit, and mentions off-road ability only fleetingly. Buyers want to sit up high in a stylish, spacious, comfortable car, and are typically more focused on inserting USB cables than toys. X3, Q5 and GLC have arrived on the market in quick succession, closely matched for price, performance, efficiency and weight. With four-cylinder turbodiesel power, all cost around £40,000, duck under 1,800 kg, and offer about 200 bhp with mid-50 smpg and circa 130 grams slash km CO2. It underlines how competitive this segment, the fastest growing vehicle segment, really is. But the reason we're here is the new BMW X3. We drove it last month in Fantasy 30D and 40i trim, now we're testing the version likely to sell more in the UK than all the others is put together, the X3 20D, priced from £38,880. All UK models, unlike the previous generation, come with X-Drive all-wheel drive. Most UK buyers will go for the M Sport variant like ours, which brings different 19-inch alloys, M body styling, sports suspension, and fantastic sports seats. M Sport hikes the price to £41,070, but our test car lands at £48,655 with options, big ticket items including adaptive LED headlights, adaptive dampers, head-up display and the comfort package with acoustic glazing, keyless entry, anti-dazzle mirrors and more. The BMW's sports seats are set low to the floor, feeling snug and comfortable, the center console angled slightly towards the driver like BMWs of old, the gear lever inviting you to reach out and punch through the shifts manually, even though you need never do so. So despite the raised ground clearance, you're immediately drinking in a kind of pseudo sports car feel. These analog cues are brought bang into the digital age with strikingly rich and crisp graphics on both the standard infotainment screen, which you can touch or control via the rotary dial, and our car's optional digital dash. It feels driver-focused, modern and very nicely screwed together. The extra 51mm in the new model's wheelbase keeps rear seat passengers happy too, with ample room for five, though you need the comfort package to get our reclining rear seats. You've also got 550 liters in the boot, or 1,600 liters with those rear seats folded flat, figures that best a 3 Series Touring by around 10%, and are again so suspiciously close to its rivals that the headmaster might want a word. The Mercedes GLC 250D is a close match for the X3 at a base of £40,675. It succeeds the GLK, which was never engineered for right-hand drive but stretches that car's boxy SUV silhouette by 120mm, making it more of a raised estate car, the GLC rides on an adapted C-Class platform. A sleek glasshouse underlines the effect, in stark contrast to the similarly estate-like BMW with its deeper window line. Despite the visual stretch and the roomy rear seats, the Mercedes takes up the least parking real estate on test, if only by a smidge. 
finished in 895 pounds worth of design ohias and thread metallic and with the amg line trim level that adds amg body styling and 19 inch alloys among other treats the glc exudes gravitas and desirability our cars running boards look a bit ridiculous like they need a pair of vertical chromed tailpipes exiting behind the b pillars but they're optional the interior maintains the high quality feel of recent mercedes with some exquisite detailing the Burmester metal speaker grills that coil like a spirograph sketch, the precision feel of the metal switch gear, the jet engine air vents, 